Hello, and welcome back to Polytoots. Uh, before we begin today's tutorial, I just wanted to cover one of the tools that I'll be using quite a lot, because um, it might get a bit confusing during the actual tutorial, but um, basically when you're in the, uh, the voxel sculpting mode, there is a tool called Vox Hide, and it's very similar to the cutoff tool, and if you've ever watched like time-lapse things from people, uh, you might think that they are using the cutoff but then they'll do something strange and you're not quite sure what's just happened and chances are they're using the um the box hide instead of the cutoff so just a as an example uh you can just you know put a hole in your mesh like that very much the same as uh the, the cutoff the main difference is that this hasn't actually removed the ge geometry it's just hidden it so you can actually bring bits of it back so i can just you know do that if i hold the uh control key and I can just start to bring bits of the mesh back which is really really cool you can get a lot of like nice interesting shapes with this um, you know things that would otherwise be you know ridiculously hard to sculpt but the other thing to consider is because this mesh is actually just hidden there's two other things that you can do so up in the geometry menu there is a delete hidden and an, an objectify hidden if you choose the first option that will basically clear the cache so it's like if you use uh, you know like a, a cut and paste operation so you control x something to your clipboard and then you just decide that you don't want that anymore and so that's what this will do it will basically remove it so this will act kind of the same as the cutoff tool like if i were to select this option now i won't be able to bring these hidden pieces back because they will be gone but the other thing is the objectify hidden and so it will bring back this uh, mesh that i've hidden but it will bring it back as an entirely new object uh, so you can do stuff like this and so now I have, you know, this other object, which is made up of the hidden pieces of that other object. So, uh, yeah, you may see me do that in the tutorial, and I will mention that it's happening. But just to kind of let you know that, uh, you know, it is the other uh, Vox hide and all of its cool stuff, because I'll be using the um, the shortcut keys. So, you know, it's not entirely obvious what's what's happening. So, yeah, um, let's just get right into the tutorial then. Okay, so yeah, starting off with the box, just because that's kind of the shape that I want, but I did want to uh, round out the corners, uh, and for that, just use the uh, cutoff tool. Um, and I always prefer to kind of do this kind of a thing with the tool. I don't know why, it's just kind of what I do. There might be an easier way to do this, but um, either way, you know, it uh, produces nice results. Um, and then, yeah, here I am just duplicating the original mesh, uh, because I want that kind of, that same shape, but to be in the middle of it. And if you ever have two shapes like this and you need to merge them in, just use the uh, the pose tool there and just select the whole object. So it works pretty nice because you're in voxels at least. Everything kind of works smoothly. Um, and yeah, here I'm duplicating that piece again and then just moving it down. And then I kind of just merge it with itself. So now it actually has like, um, you know, a, a portion that meets the floor. Um, and with this cutoff, you can see it looks a little bit weird. And that's because I... I had scaled this object, but I forgot to set the scale back to global, which I do here. Um, so now after you do that, after you've scaled an object, now you can kind of do other stuff uh, like cutting out of it and it'll be uh, like a lot crisper and cleaner. Um, so yeah, now here I've just merged those two objects into one and I'm making a, a new layer here and I'm just subtracting this new primitive from this object, which is uh, it's always pretty cool. Um, and now here's where I'm using the, uh, the Vox Hide for the first time. Um, and I basically just wanted to create some sort of like rim or something to that effect. So uh, I'm just kind of marking down the points. Um, and I did have the, uh, the depth on there. Um, and then so here is where I just bring back that piece that I hid. And it just kind of gives me that little kind of line on the top. Um, which, you know, I could t take or leave. I'm not really sold on it. So here I'm using the... Uh, the Vox Hide tool again and I have set uh, a depth limit which is always pretty handy you know because I can cut out that shape and then just bring a piece of it back rather than having to make that shape uh, on its own uh, so which is always pretty cool and now I'm using the uh, the Vox Extrude tool just to try and kind of get um, a piece here extruded outwards it would be where the um, like the radio FM stuff and there's some really strange things happening here uh, at first I thought it was maybe just a visual glitch but um, yeah it's a bit strange so if you ever have this happen to you, um, and it's just not going away, don't forget that you can actually just use like a paintbrush and just hold control and just get rid of the bits that you don't actually want. Um, as for why this happened anyway, I'm not entirely sure. 
Now for the actual speak a bit, uh, again I'm just kind of using a primitive and I'm on the subtract mode to actually just cut that sh shape out, but uh, I did decide that um, I wanted the corners of this to be a bit rounded, so instead I swapped it back to add so I could bring in that object into its own layer, um, and then again just using the other uh, cutoff tool here to just like uh, round out those corners, and then I can subtract that mesh uh, by just holding the control key while moving the layer over the other one. You know, before we use the shift to uh, to combine things, then you use the control to basically remove them, which is always pretty handy. So again here, just using uh, another primitive. This one's like the, uh, the cog one or the gear or something. But basically I wanted something with like teeth because I wanted to, uh, you know, easily create something like one of those old radio dials, um, you know, with like the uh, nibbly bits. I don't know if that's a that's a proper word um, but yeah as you can see here like the resolution on these pieces is so small so I use that res plus there uh, just to kind of increase the resolution for the layer and now you know pretty pretty good from this point I kind of ran into a bit of an issue actually I wanted to kind of cut off all of the the ends a bit um, but I realized that with the uh, the radial symmetry that I was using uh, it didn't quite line up so I basically just undid that uh, cog primitive and I went back to the primitive tool and I just kind of rotated it until you know it was roughly kind of uh, you know north south east west and then um, using the actual symmetry options just to make sure that it was actually completely symmetrical so now I can actually use radial symmetry on this and uh, if I make the cutoff on one of the teeth it will it will do it for all of them which is uh, it's pretty cool and then lastly uh, I just wanted to kind of like round out the um, like the forward bit so I'm just using the other uh, pose tool here with the uh, the paint select mode um, which is you know it's pretty good and then to save myself some time I just kind of duplicated that same one that we just made because uh, I wanted one to be like on the left and the right down at the bottom and then I'm just using the other uh, box hide here to kind of create like a little inset for it but it was a little too sharp so I ended up just using like a um, like the standard kind of draw tool just to kind of give it a little bit of um, like a bump or you know like a, a rim kind of a thing. Um, I, I wasn't too careful here because it's a pretty sort of small area but uh, you know it, it works okay. And then just uh, I gave it like a little um, once over with the pinch tool uh, just to kind of crease up some of those edges and to also kind of help uh, bring back some of the shape because it looks kind of like a little wonky and uh, with the pinch tool you can actually kind of manipulate the shape of things to a certain extent so uh, that's why I use that there uh, and then yeah again just duplicating that last one over um, and then merging any layers kind of as as I need to moving on from here uh, I wanted to create like a little inset for the um, the switches uh, you know there would be like some uh, buttons here that you could press uh, and there was a bit of sort of trial and error with this kind of uh, trying to work out what the right depth amount would be um, and then lastly kind of creating um, just a little extra inset for where I will eventually kind of texture in the um, like the radio f frequency things you know the ones where you actually scroll through them to uh, to find the channel and then for the actual switches themselves uh, I started off just with like a box primitive uh, and I gave it a different color just because um, I was having like a hard time kind of seeing it in amongst everything uh, and then over there I kind of left the symmetry on the uh, the Y so I had to just remove that. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm using the Vox Hide tool here because um, I wasn't entirely sure kind of what shape to go for or what the best way to create it would be so um, that's kind of why I prefer to use something like the Vox Hide because you can just you know undo um, but you don't necessarily have to undo the whole thing you can just kind of pick and choose um, but yeah, that's pretty much all that shape is, just uh, just a box with some box hide, um, and then yeah, done. I did want to create like a little um, speaker hole in the back, um, and I started off using the uh, the box extrude tool because I knew it had an option to uh, flatten the extrude, which means like even if it's at an angle, it should eventually kind of uh, flatten out on on you know on on an axis. Um, but it wasn't working for some reason. I don't, uh, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but yeah, so I eventually just went back to using the other uh, the other uh, box hide t tool here as well from just like front on perspective because then that will actually do what I want where basically you can see it cuts a, an angle but it keeps the actual bit at the back flat um, which is which is yeah the uh, desired outcome um, and you see me here kind of messing a bit with the grids 
Um, this is just because I want to enable the uh, the 3D grid snapping because uh, I'm going to create like the uh, the cage that will kind of you know um, the the thing that you kind of see in front of the speakers. Um, and so I'm just basically using the uh, the grid snapping to create all of these pieces just to make sure that everything kind of aligns to a grid. And it does require like um, some kind of tweaks and making sure that the grid size uh, will actually allow you to create the sizes that you want. Um, so, you know, expect a little bit of kind of back and forth here. Um, the other thing to kind of watch out for is um, if you're working on like a large scale at least, uh, the poly count of, 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 of these shapes can kind of get astronomical. So uh, I think you see me here like a few times that we'll actually do the um, resample, which is the option next to res plus. Um, there it is there. Um, and I basically just crank these down, um, which I, I think I do later on as well, once everything is in place. But um, yeah, I mean, there's no need for these objects to be just gargantuan. Um, but anyway, after you've kind of made the grid, you would want to turn the uh, the grid snapping off. And now you'd be able to move things about without having them snapped to a grid. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a case of kind of having this whole piece and then putting it in place. And uh, that's it. And then I think at this point, uh, I do just give it a little test render just to see kind of how it looks. Um, yeah, and then I'm just creating a new shape here because I want to create another kind of inset on the sides. Um, so I'm just, I've just made a box and again, I'm using the uh, cutoff just to round out the corners. But you notice that um, I've, I, I have forgotten to do it on the symmetry. So I correct that here and I'll only cut off one of the corners. And then by shift clicking on the left side, um, I can actually come down to the the right there and then I can just create basically a symmetry copy from the left to the right uh, and then it's just a case of kind of using the uh, the pose tool again just to kind of put it in place and then again I'm going to hold control and move it over the base layer just to kind of cut that out uh, and then again just kind of like grabbing that grid that we'd already made and just uh, sticking it in place basically. And because this new cage was a duplicate, uh, it, it doesn't actually exist on the other side. So I've just hit that symmetry thing again, uh, making sure that symmetry is actually enabled. So it just flips it over to the to the other side. So now going back to the Voxide tool, um, again, making sure that the, uh, the depth was turned off so it cuts all the way through. Uh, I'm just kind of playing around and trying to make some sort of interesting shape here. And you can see sort of how easy it is to do this with the Voxide tool. Like that kind of shape would be so hard to do otherwise. Um, but yeah, from this point on, I'm just kind of adding little bits. Like this one will be like um, a button or a switch. I think the idea was that, you know, you'd be able to sort of turn it on. So again, it's just kind of like laying down uh, a primitive. And then I think I just, yeah, I just extrude that primitive again. So that's just, you know, an easy button. And so for here on the back, uh, I did want to introduce some sort of paneling, like something that you could actually access with some screws or something. So you could sort of access the inside. Um, not that there would be an inside, but you know, it's all about the illusion and all that. And uh, I am using the Voxide tool here because I wanted to use the um, Objectify Hidden again uh, to actually sort of like create that new mesh and it would automatically have that gap. Uh, and then I'm just kind of introducing some holes um, and then just putting in these little kind of screws, which again, I think I'm using the, the Voxide there again, just to kind of put those screws into place. And then last but not least, I wanted some kind of um, antenna type thing. So I originally started by just duplicating the uh, th the button that I'd made, uh, scaled it down a bit. And then I think I used the, uh, the pose tool here with the paint select just to basically grab the fr front end and then scale it up. And I do also do a resample just to kind of make it not look as kind of weird uh, but for the antenna thing itself uh, yeah it's basically just a cylinder primitive that I'm just kind of hooking onto that uh, extended button that I've made um, and then just applying it moving it up scaling it down and then applying it again so it just kind of forms you know that sort of uh, recognizable shape uh, and then for the very end of it just kind of using again just uh, a cylinder but um, squishing it all the, all the way down and I mean that's pretty much it for the aerial and yeah I mean that's pretty much it uh, there's nothing else that uh, I have left to do on this so it's ready to be retopoed and UV'd and baked um, but yeah this is just a kind of like a quick sort of um, look at kind of how I would model 
something like this like it's always great when you get like these little props to make and you don't have to worry too much about sort of tr traditional sculpting or anything you can just kind of like create shapes and cut them out of each other and you know the um the vox eye tool is great for that um so yeah that is it for this video uh let me know if there's anything that's you know a bit too confusing or or you know whatever um but yeah thank you for watching uh, and i will see you in the next one